Coming up on this week's news, prosecutors charge both a building firm and a local authority over the death of an electrician in a storm. Criminal gangs target solar panels and EV chargers as energy prices soar, and we meet the dad who's banned his family from using electricity. He's even forcing them to wear head torches. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with My Energy. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. Prosecutors in Northern Ireland have charged a construction company and a district council with health and safety offences following the death of an electrician during a storm. 24-year-old Matthew Campbell was killed when he was struck by a falling tree as strong winds lashed the province during Storm Alley in 2018. Newry Magistrates Court heard that Campbell was working in Sleeve Gullion Forest Park as winds in Northern Ireland reached 91 miles an hour. It's alleged that Lagan Construction Limited and Newry, Morn and Down District Council failed to make appropriate risk assessments. Campbell and his fiancée were due to be married the following August and the pair had sent out the save the date cards and collected their wedding rings on the day the tragedy struck. Defence lawyers have now asked for an adjournment to give them more time to review all the documents relating to the case. Uh, for me, that is just such a tragic story. Our condolences to Mr Campbell's family. Uh, we always round this show up by saying stay safe out there. Please, please take that seriously, folks. In other news, it's been revealed that criminal gangs are turning their attention to renewable technologies, including solar panels and EV chargers. The energy crisis is causing a spike in the theft of solar panels as people desperately try to keep bills down. Worcestershire is the country's worst hotspot for solar panel thefts, according to Deter Tech, who say overall thefts are up 22.5% this year compared to last. In one case, £3,000 worth of panels were stolen from a disabled woman's home, and in another, two inverters and 220 solar panels worth £70,000 were removed from a poultry farm in Lincolnshire. And in Sheffield, Oxford and Bournemouth, there have been reports of charging cables being hacked off and stolen. Deter Tech's Head of Intelligence, Rachel Oakley, is advising electrical contractors not to buy second-hand equipment such as solar panels without first determining their origin. One piece of renewable equipment that thieves will struggle to steal is Europe's biggest battery, which has just landed in Yorkshire. The giant battery has been built by Tesla near the Dogger Bank offshore wind project. It can store almost 200 megawatt hours of electricity in a single cycle. That's enough to power around 300,000 homes for two hours. In fact, this is just the sort of installation that judges in the eFix Awards are looking forward to assessing in the Renewables Installer of the Year category. So if you think you've completed an outstanding installation of batteries, solar, EV or other technology, tell us all about it. Send us some pictures and who knows, you could be the proud winner of an eFix Awards trophy. I've popped the link to the website in the show notes. One thing, however, that many electrical contractors won't win a prize for is labelling. Historically, it's been pretty rare to rock up to a disboard where all the circuits are clearly identified, so we were curious to see if labelling has improved in recent years. In our eFix survey this week, we asked, how do you label your consumer units and switch gear? 2,000 electricians answered the poll. 12% of you told us that you write your labels by hand. Another 12% said you use the ones supplied by the manufacturer. Almost half of you said that you print them yourself. Top work there. And 27% of you responded by asking, what labels? The good news for the labeling refuse nicks is that the latest kit is making it easier than ever to give that super professional look to your customers. Phoenix Contact has in fact just unveiled a range of portable printers. Some use a traditional keypad and others use an app. Gordon has given them the once over and his video review is fresh from the oven. I've put the link in the show notes, so don't be a donut and write a label to remind yourself to check it out on the channel. Finally, have you heard the one about the priest, the minister and the rabbi trying to save money on their energy bills? No, me neither, but you try shoehorning the word rabbi into an electrical podcast. Anyway, the cost of energy is causing huge headaches for many families across the UK. Some are turning to novel ideas to cut their bills, ideas that don't always work out as expected. Some customers of Octopus Energy joined a company energy reduction scheme, only to learn that after sitting in the dark for an hour, they had saved mere pennies off their bill. During the so-called saving sessions, customers are asked to switch off their electricity for an hour. Over 200,000 households took part in the first session between 5pm and 6pm on November the 15th. But one customer took to Twitter to complain that after using no electricity for a full hour, they got a rebate of just 8p. The householder described it as a total waste of time. Another sat in the dark with only the fridge on and saved 54 pence. 
Responding, Octopus Energy says that the typical bill payers taking part received well over £1 for the one-hour shift, and the top 5% of participants earned an average of £4.27. The company says it expects to run longer sessions over the course of the winter with the opportunity to save more. It also points out that the feedback from customers is actually very positive, with many even enjoying the experience. But when it comes to energy saving, no one can touch Chavdar Todorov of Barnet in North London. The 53-year-old father of two has introduced a strict no-electricity-at-home policy. He's even instructed his wife Moda, 8-year-old Theo and 20-year-old Nicole to wear head torches to find their way around the house. He puts the heating on just once a week and encourages his wife and children to wrap up in coats and blankets. Todorov brought in the stringent measures after the family's energy bill doubled in price to £320 a month. Normal tasks such as doing the dishes, reading and yoga are now done under the solitary beam of a head torch. Todorov has also replaced the electric lighting with candles. He says as they don't know what the bill is going to be like at the end of the month, they're doing everything they can. Meanwhile, Moda is remaining loyal to her husband. She wears a head torch but says it's scary and she doesn't feel as safe. She says the family is trying to think positive, but it's hard. That's it for this week, but make sure you're keeping an eye on our YouTube channel because we've got some cracking videos coming up this week, including a review of the Sterling Curve dado trunking from Marshall Tuflex, a couple of intriguing Q&As on split load boards and splintered screwdrivers, and of course it's a live stream week and we've got an industrial theme to this episode, so keep your eyes peeled for an appearance by Top Brass from CNORM, including Managing Director Ian Lockley, Project Sales Manager Luke Carter, and a mystery guest from marketing who's determined to stay off camera. Tune in to see how that works out for them. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into today's show, pop your guests into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were whippersnapper and bitcoin, and the first person to guess them right was someone with the shortest surname ever, it's Mark C. So well done to you, Mark. Click the link in the description below to claim your prize, and make sure you give our love to Mel. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with My Energy. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week, stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.